Will I?
Amen to that. Welcome to the City of Refuge United Church of Christ. My name is Matthew and I'm here to do our welcome. At the City of Refuge United Church of Christ, we are a ministry of restoration. We are intentionally radically inclusive. We welcome all persons regardless of race, color, ancestry, age, gender, ability, sexual or affectional orientation. We celebrate the Creator's diversity. We worship Christ and we welcome persons from all faith paths, which harmonize with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Reverend Dr. Yvette Flunder, who is the presiding bishop of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries and the senior pastor of Refuge, City of Refuge Ministries, along with the pastoral team and the entire congregation, thank you for worshiping with us today. If you are a first time visitor, or if you've been away for a while, please let us know by typing hashtag visitor in the chat. Refugees, please show some love to our visitors and welcome back to those returning. Thank you. Please join us as Pastor Lay, pa Lay Pastor Raymond leads us in community prayer today. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Lay Pastor Raymond Glover. It's prayer time. But first we want to, we would like to wish our own mother, Martha, a happy 91st birthday. To God be the glory. We are grateful and blessed for her life. We also want to wish a happy birthday to our dear brother, Sam's son, Parker, who turned 13. Bless the Lord. God is good. How amazing it is to celebrate life on purpose. I invite you to put your prayer request in the chat as we gather together and we touch and agree in heart and spirit today. On our prayer list today, we want to keep Bishop and Mother in our prayers for continued traveling grace. We are grateful and thankful for their safety today. Uh, we'd like to pray for Jermay Bally and family in the loss of his Tia. Pray for Michelle Ruiz and family and the passing of her aunt. Prayer for Giovante Brown in the loss of his grandmother. God is our peace and comforter. Pray for our dear sister Vivian Sims, who has been hospitalized in Washington, D.C. God is holding and keeping her and for our, our Deacon Tracy for traveling grace as she is on her way there. We want to pray for our, our brother Chuck's friend, Yasin Bell, whose eldest daughter, Liza, and her granddaughter, Emma, 
who lost their house in an electrical fire. They escaped with just their clothes on their backs. And we know God is a keeper. They are safe and sound, but they need help. <clears throat> so we're praying for them. There is a GoFundMe for them as well. It's Liza Simmons Milagra. It's organized by A.J. Colloway. So help them if we can. We want to pray for Sister Sharon Scott for emergency surgery and recovery. We pray for Sister Suzette Cole Sharp, who is requesting prayer for her physical healing, specifically for her head, leg, and belly. We thank God for healing power. I hear God saying, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your diseases. I am the Lord, your healer. So let us pray. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Hmm. Lord, we thank you first for this day that truly wasn't promised to us. We thank you for waking us up this morning with a mind that says, I will bless the Lord at all times and a praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, there's so much going on in, in our world, so much going on in our spaces, so much going on in our minds, bodies, and our spirits. But we take this time, God, to say thank you. Thank you for touching us this morning and waking us up to new life. God, we thank you for our church family. We thank you for those who have voiced these prayer requests and those that are in the chat. God, we thank you because we know that you are the God that healeth. You're the God that is a comforter to those who mourn and grieve, God. You are the God that gives strength when so much <clears throat> makes us weak. God, you are our strength today. God, we thank you for, for being a God that keeps our minds safe. All around us, our minds are running amok, God, with governments and politics and things that would cause us, our minds to go astray, God. We thank you for being a God that keeps us today. God, we thank you for loving us the way you love us. God, so that's our prayer today, God, is that you will present yourself with us wherever we might be today, God, that you will draw us near to thee. God, we pray that you will bind us together, God, with such a love that would help us to all call out, God, how can we help one another? How can we love more today? God, we pray for the one who will bring word today, God. We pray that you will. Bless her, God, for that that she has prepared in our hearts for us, God. You have given her a word today, God, and we wish that you would help our minds, bodies, and spirits, God, to be open to your word today, because we know that it will bring healing. We know that it would bring life. So, God, we thank you for that word in advance. God, we thank you for the city of refuge and all of its agencies, God. We pray that you will continue to give and be what it needs to be for us to be better, to be whole. God, we thank you, God, and we give you praise, glory, and honor today, God. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Greetings, I'm Deacon Tony Lewis with your invitation to giving. At the City of Refuge United Church of Christ, we strive daily through a pandemic to empower, enrich, and renew disenfranchised and marginalized communities, both locally and abroad. It is through generous donations from you, our family, friends, visitors, and viewers that local refuge programs, such as the Word of Mouth Food Pantry, LGBTQ and differently abled education and inclusion work, national social justice, equality activism through TFAM, the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, as well as our missions and ministries in Mexico, Asia, Africa, and the United Kingdom can continue to make room at the table for everyone. 
We invite you to become a part of our efforts in providing practical, no harm solutions to critical community and world issues. No donation is too small to make a difference. And giving is simple. You can use text to give by texting 510-257-9001. Enter the amount that you'd like to give, press send, and follow the prompts through EasyTithe. Or you can use Cash App, dollar sign C-O-R-U-C-C, or PayPal, www.paypal.me forward slash C-O-R-U-C-C. We thank you in advance for your gifts and for partnering with us in making someone's life brighter when things aren't so bright. While you're giving, Pastor Ann has some special announcements. Good morning, good morning, good morning, City of Refuge. We have a couple of very special announcements. This first announcement says, do you have experience with commercial real estate development? If so, would you like to participate in City of Refuge's Legacy Senior Housing Development Project? How exciting is that? How exciting because a number of us are moving into or we're already in the senior housing category. But if you have experience or are interested in participating in this, please get in touch with Pastor Tony Dunbar. You can reach her by her uh, email address of dunbart1 at pm.me, or you may text her at 415-728-1709. And then our second announcement, very special. Listen, I have heard the joyful sound, mother lives, mother lives. Tell the good news all around, mother lives, mother lives. And Mother Shirley Miller doesn't just live, but she is thriving. And you won't even believe that she is about to turn how many years? 80 years. Wonderful. So we want to make sure that her birthday is truly a happy day. And we, as the City of Refuge and friends and family, uh, we are going to bless her with a tangible gift. And we are inviting you to share, to share one dollar for every year of her life. If you are able to give $80, we encourage you to do that. Because for one thing, whether you have been a member of City of Refuge uh, for one month or for the full 30 plus years, you have been blessed. You have been the beneficiary of Mother Miller's presence her prayers, her praise, and her power. She's such a blessing to so many of us. She's been such an incredible blessing uh, uh, just within my own life. And City of Refuge, we don't want to be outdone showing blessings to her. We want no less than 100 donations of $80. If you don't have $80 to give, give what you can. No gift will be turned away because we know it comes in love. At the same time, if you have more than $80 to share, let's do that. Let's be a blessing. And again, City of Refuge, we don't want anyone to out give us. So you can give in the same way is that you give to the offering, but just make sure uh, to indicate that it's for Mother Miller's birthday gift. We want to be a blessing to her because God has gifted a most incredible blessing to uh, us. So please, we want to uh, receive as many of your gifts by um, the second weekend of September as we prepare for um, her special birthday celebration, which you will hear about in just a few minutes. Again, let's make this an incredibly happy day uh, for the one who is the mother of our church. God bless you. And thank you already for what you're going to do. This time we'll hear uh, some music from uh, Tiffany Boone. I will lift up your name, and then we will receive the remainder of our announcements uh, from uh, Sister Liz Waiters. God bless you. 
God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. Let's bless the Lord this morning because he's a great God. And he deserves it. Come on. City of Refuge. This is Liz Waiters and these are the announcements for the week. Mother Shirley Miller's 80th birthday is coming up. Save the date for Mother Miller's birthday celebration dinner and join us for family style soul food on Saturday, September 17th from 5 to 9 p.m. here at City of Refuge. Details on how to register and the COVID protocol that will be in place for the event are forthcoming. Join us on Zoom after service today for Fellowship Coffee Hour, which takes place every second and fourth Sunday after service on Zoom. City of Refuge will be presenting a hybrid worship service next Sunday, September 4th at 11 a.m. presided by our own Pastor Phil Gray. Join us online or in person in Oakland to attend in person, register online at cityofrefugeucc.org. And here's a shout out to our refugees making news. Jasmine Thomas Ganey was interviewed by the Marin Independent Journal about her booming home baked human grade dog treats business called Doggy Dog Treats by Jazzy. Doggy Dog Treats by Jazzy are available for sale on Etsy and at markets throughout the Bay Area. Congratulations, Jasmine. And Sam Cannon Wisher of Cannon Coffee is featured in East Bay Nosh, which is the Oakland side and Berkeley side newspaper's food section about espresso machine repair and the interesting connection between mindfulness, spirituality, and the meditative nature of working with one's hands. Congratulations, Sam. Are you trying to find a place to connect? Are you interested in nurturing your prayer practice or prayer life? Are you willing to be on camera? Are you willing to hold our community, our country, our world, and our movement before God? If you answered yes to any of these questions, we invite you to contact lay pastor Sean Saxton at onerevshawn at gmail.com to learn more. COVID-19 testing is still important. OptumServe Mobile Testing Bus will be at City of Refuge, 8400 Enterprise Way in Oakland, every Tuesday and Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Walk-ups are welcome and appointments are recommended. To make an appointment, call 888-634-1130. These have been the announcements for the week and my pleasure bringing them to you. Be well.
جميل You're muted. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pastor Tony Dunbar from City of Refuge, UCC. And it is my profound pleasure to introduce our preacher for today, Nareda Nettie Young. Nettie Young is a proud Latina and first generation seminarian at San Francisco Theological Seminary who is passionate about spiritually based social engagement. Her passion to advance and amplify minoritized voices in the church and in society at large. She is currently training to become a spiritual director and her focus is to support leaders and activists of color by cultivating spaces of healing, compassion and peace. Nettie also seeks to support parents and caregivers with spiritual resources to sustain and nurture family life in the work of passing on the faith and raising children who feel empowered to dream, love, pray, play, and create. Nettie is an ordination candidate within the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and you will often find her doing what she loves, meeting new people, enjoying nature, trying new food, dancing, laughing with her family. She has a partner and three beautiful, beautiful children and adventuring to new places, experiencing firsthand the beautiful diversity present in the world. Her scriptures for today are from Jonah chapter two, verses one through 10 in the new revised standard version, updated edition. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress. And he answered me, out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars are closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O oh Lord my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out onto the dry land. Minister Nettie's title today is Undrowned, inspired by author Dr. Alexis Pauline Gums. The next voice you will hear will be that of Minister Nareda Nettie Young. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tony, for that warm welcome and introduction and the powerful reading of the scripture. I wanna say hello to the City of Refuge family. It is an honor to worship with you today from wherever you are joining us. Thank you for being here. I know I have met some of you, but for those who have not seen me before or know who I am, my name is Nereida Young, but my friends call me Nettie. And I offer greetings on behalf of all those who have helped bring me to this point. I want to acknowledge my ancestors, and specifically my living ancestors, my grandparents, Arturo and Marta Cantu, Angelica and Senaido Martinez, my parents, Saul and Neri Martinez, my partner, Isaiah, and my children, Serenity, Valor, and Rio, and the new child forming in my womb right now. I give much thanks to you all. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge the leaders of City of Refuge, Bishop Yvette Flunder, Mother Shirley Miller, and Pastor Anne, 
Pastor Tony and the other pastors and lay leaders of this community. Thank you for your deep faith and inspiring leadership that continues to show up amidst all the struggles and joys we are individually and collectively walking through. I've had the pleasure of participating and worshiping with this community for the last couple of years. And I continue to be so encouraged by the depth of love, faith and commitment to living out the gospel and living out lives of liberation for all. Today, I would like to take a few moments to speak to you all on the topic of living undrowned. I was inspired to share this with you from the story of Jonah in the Hebrew Bible. Many of you may be familiar with this story, and for others, this may be the first time, but I was really drawn to this story because just recently, I was spending time in prayer, questioning and wrestling with the divine around feelings of being overwhelmed, uncertain, and afraid. As a young Latina mother who's asking myself how to show up for my family and for those in my community, in the times that we are living through, it is not easy. The last few years in seminary, I have become increasingly aware of structural oppression, histories and legacies of white supremacy, Christian supremacy, xenophobia, transphobia, sexism, cis patriarchy, ableism, extractive capitalism, and even how Western objectivism has devastated the Earth's natural resources. And of course, living through the pandemic, where I and so many others have experienced so much loss in a country that continues to deny its impacts on us and where the marginalized continue to have to absorb the most intense repercussions of all this. And in becoming more aware of these realities, also sitting with the recognition that so much of what I yearn and hope to experience has yet to become. And so I sit there asking myself, where do I go from here? Recently, I have been sitting in the tension, realizing that so much of what has got me to this point are the very things that I need to let go of. The internalized oppression as a woman, as a person of color, those aspects within myself that would rather assimilate to be safe than to speak out the truth which is the only starting place where change and healing can begin. So where do I go from here? This is the question that I believe is not only a personal question for us to ask as individuals, but a question that we should ask collectively and in community. So that's the question that I pose with this message of living undrowned. Where shall we go from here. I invite you to ask yourself this question for a moment. Where shall we go from here? The reason why I want to look at the story of Jonah is because it seems to deal with this question. Jonah was a Hebrew pro a prophet and a man called by God to go to a city far away which he did not desire to go. The city was named Nineveh and was a metropolis, a military center of the Assyrian Empire, known for its power, violence, and intimidation. Jonah knew those from Nineveh as those who conquered and ruled over his people, and so he tried to flee from this assignment. And when I was studying the story, I really connected with that desire to flee from those who have not proven to be trustworthy. And as the story goes, Jonah was on a ship going in the other direction and a storm emerged, a powerful storm, threatening the lives of all who were on the ship. Jonah consents and volunteers himself to be thrown overboard, seemingly committing suicide. And in the midst of his despair, thrown into the sea, Jonah is submerged by the fierce and stormy waters. Then Jonah gets swallowed by a monstrous fish. And the scripture tells us 
Jonah was in the bowels of the fish for three days and three nights. In Jewish culture, the number three is significant as it represents completeness. And in the Jewish culture, a person would be confirmed to be totally dead after the third day. Thus, the story is seemingly communicating to Jewish readers and hearers that Jonah had died in the depths of the fish. Jonah was dead. When I look at our moment, our current moment, the systemic polarization, violence, and the crumbling of old systems that were created for some at the exclusion of others, these systems are dying. They're coming to their end. What if we right now are in the belly of the fish on day three, asking ourselves with no place to go in sight, where do we go from here? Wondering what shall come of all this? In the midst of being in the fish for three days, the scripture says that then a prayer arose from Jonah. My question is, how did this prayer arise from someone who was dead? What if this prayer did not come from Jonah, but maybe it came from before Jonah and it flowed through him and it could only be heard and known when Jonah no longer had any agendas to block him from listening. See, this story was written from a traumatized and oppressed people who were wondering how to make sense of their experience being victims of violence and domination. And this story speaks to the prayers that arise from those very moments and experiences of death and devastation. Perhaps this prayer credited to Jonah that we've read together was not a prayer from an individual, but a prayer from those who came before him and were now praying through him when he was quiet enough to listen. And perhaps it wasn't just the ancestors, but also the spirit of the land that flowed through Jonah. Listen to what the scripture says in Jonah 2, 5 through 6. The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Jonah's deliverance was not his own doing, but was the divine and the cosmos at work in and through him. Think about it for a moment. It wasn't another human who came to save him. It was the fish and the earth that held a container for Jonah to be transformed and delivered into his resurrected self. What if right now, in our moment, we are being invited to remember to give ourselves to the land and to all those who have gone before us? What if we're not able to think or solve our way out of our situation, but rather we're being invited to let go and fall our way into our what's next. Yoruban philosopher Bayo Akomolafe says, maybe falling is really flying without the tyranny of coordinates. What if this is our moment? Not to pull ourselves together but to allow ourselves to come undone together in the presence of the divine and allowing the Holy Spirit to meet us there, change us there and deliver us there. 
in the book titled Undrowned, author Dr. Alexis Pauline Gums is inviting us to remember the ways marine mammals and our black ancestors have adapted to survive the violence of colonization and Western capitalism and how they have learned a new way of being, of becoming and breathing through trial and adversity. Imagine with me, what if we open ourselves up to listen to the prayer that is being passed on to us for this moment? What if there are lessons to learn, not from earning more degrees or completing more trainings, but from returning to the land and to ancestral practices that have been silenced and diminished? What if the way forward isn't to create something new on our own, but to return to the ways of our indigenous ancestors and to embody their teachings in a way that's new for today? My invitation for us today, together, is to ready ourselves to live undrowned and to invite those new ways of being, becoming, and breathing in. Invite them in. It may feel awkward, frightening, and uncomfortable as we sit in the depths of the unknown and in the decay of our current systems. But we can trust in the living God who is always present and working through our adverse conditions. And when we look to the life of Jesus, according to the scriptures, I don't see someone who was trying to solve everyone's problems or fix society at large, but Jesus was radically present and continued to give himself to his own being and becoming in union with God, closely connected to the suffering of the world. There are no easy answers and no one size fits all, but the invitation from Jesus is to know ourselves deeply in this union with the divine as well. So as we sit here in this moment, I invite you and I invite all of us to reflect on all that we are holding in this moment. Reflect on what you are holding in this moment. Uncertainties, worries, fears maybe of where all this is headed. Take a moment. And as we reflect on what we are holding, I invite us to let our prayer arise from here so that we may allow ourselves to open up, to listen, to know God and to know ourselves more deeply through this. Let us pray. In this moment, we bring awareness to our breath. We acknowledge the spirit of God in and through us, our ancestors and the land and Holy Spirit, we come undone before you today, reflecting on all that we are holding in these uncertain times, or perhaps what we are holding in the particular situation we are going through right now. And as a prayer emerged from Jonah, we pray that we hear and we can listen to the prayer that is arising from us today. Help us to listen because we trust in your resurrection power in the way you delivered Jonah, you are delivering us, transforming us. And we have seen from our ancestors and our people how beauty comes out of the decay. Beauty comes out of the ashes. And we trust in your resurrection power today. So here we are, humbled and open. Meet us here today, O oh God. In Christ's name and in your many names, living God, we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory and honor to God. Glory and honor to God for a powerful, powerful word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Nettie. Bless God for, for your word, for the word, for allowing that place of being empty to allow the word of God to come through and be encouragement for us today. Wow. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hmm. You know, today we thank everyone who has joined us to worship with us today. We pray that you have been encouraged, um, that you are, your heart has been opened, possibly transformed by this time together. It's our wish at the City of Refuge to offer our best in hospitality, community, and relationship. Of course, the greatest of these is relationship, a relationship with your creator. It is the ultimate embrace of love and safety that we can ask for. It doesn't matter your background, your mistakes, your education, your affections, your hates. <laughs> it doesn't matter about your finances, about your affiliations. It doesn't matter how you identify your gender presentations. Because there is absolutely nothing, not even your own thinking, that can separate you from the love of Christ. Today, if you are so inclined to accept the offer of relationship with Christ, we ask that you acknowledge your RSVP at the table of life by typing hashtag Jesus in the comment section of your platform. Yes, hashtag Jesus, because there is no name more powerful. When we call on the name of Jesus, everything changes. Things are shifted in us and for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, hashtag Jesus. Hmm, bless the name of God. Hashtag Jesus in your chat. Bless the name of God. One of our ministers will be contacting you. Um, don't be alarmed. It's not a scam. <laughs> um, we will contact you and pray with you uh, on today. And I, on, on, on our Facebook page, I believe, Lay Pastor Raymond will be uh, contacting folks if you have typed hashtag Jesus in your chat. Bless God. And now, as you embark upon more development in your relationship with a God that you understand, we it's good to have a good home place to do that in. And so speaking of home, maybe you don't have a church home or a supportive, inclusive community where you currently are. Maybe you've been praying for somewhere to worship, and now you are right here with us. Maybe you have questions or need a supportive shoulder to lean on. Listen, we invite you, we welcome you to the City of Refuge United Church of Christ community, both locally and abroad. You are welcome here. So if you want to make this your home, just type hashtag home in the comments section and our new members department will follow up with you. Now, if you're watching this service, either on Facebook or YouTube, outside of our normal broadcast time, and you can't wait until the next live service, just send us an email to cor.refugee at gmail.com. I just want to say welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. As we close today, if you'd like to partner with this ministry and aid in our efforts, both locally and internationally, you can use Cash App, dollar sign, Core UCC, or PayPal at paypal.me backslash Core UCC and text to give 
at 510-257-9001 and follow the prompts. My phone is buzzing. That usually means somebody's texting and telling me something, but I'm going to keep moving right here. And our own pastor, Bishop Yvette A. Flunder, Mother Shirley Miller, and of course, the City of Refuge Ministries want to hear from you. So please send us your prayer requests, comments, or your questions uh, via Instagram at Refuge UCC, Twitter and Facebook at City of Refuge UCC. Our minister today reminded us that our very souls cry out. Where shall we go from here? In the moment that is now in the belly of the whale, where power, violence, and intimidation have proven to not be trustworthy, we are still. We allow the prayers of our ancestors, our prayers from the divine, to flow through us and to us. Hmm. We are ready to be undrowned. Take this word with you this week. Begin to practice being undrowned. What does that look like in your environment, in your life today? As we close today, we leave you with the offering all unto you by Nona Brown. Be blessed. God bless you this week. Clap your hands, all ye people. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Use your feet to dance before him. Use your feet to dance before him. Lift your voice, rejoice and exalt him. Lift your voice, rejoice and exalt him. Oh, yeah. 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 Thanksgiving. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And enter his courts with your praise. And enter his courts with your praise. Be thankful for all his goodness. Be thankful hey. for all his goodness. Giving glory and honor to 